Do you mind if I put my glasses back on? Yeah, you can I actually feel uh, more comfortable with, with my shades. That's cool. You understand that the getup is, is part of the persona. Matt Sackerman is is a husband. Matt Sackerman is committed. Matt Sackerman is professional. Matt Sackerman is focused. Beards is a husband. Beards is committed. Beards is professional. Beards is focused. Beards has a purpose. I want to thank everybody. Joey! Joey? <laughs> You want to shut up for one second? I want to thank everybody for coming out to the first Branded by Beards slash Life Behind Beards club night. Thank you. Life Behind Beards is my man Mantooth right here. Yeah. Branded by Beards yeah. is my man Beards yeah. right here. Yeah. 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 Honestly, uh, Joey. <laughs> Who's Joey? Who is this Honestly, Joey? I love this guy. You not have asked for a better turnout. Seriously, thank yeah. you so much for coming out. This is awesome. You guys are great, man. But most importantly, March 14th, yes. the New York City Beard and Mustache Championship. Give me that, give me that fucker. Right here. Guys. The organizer of the entire thing. That's my beard. This is going to be one of the most amazing nights of your life. I guarantee this will be unlike anything you've ever been to in your lives. If you can come out to this event, I guarantee you will have a good time and you'll be talking to your in-laws for years to come on, on, on entertainment. Um, I have about $10,000 invested into this, so please come out and enjoy, enjoy. Thank you time. Hopefully you all heard that. I did. Again. They're putting water in the whiskey just to keep the boys in line. You ain't busting up my place like you did last time. The drinks are getting weaker with every round they serve. The way they keep us sober, man, it's getting on my nerves. So when I'm dead and gone, I want some sugar in my coffin. Well, I said if I've got to go, I want some sugar in my coffin. No, there ain't no Elvis Presley from the waist down. Or else I ain't learned nothing from TV. A beard club consists of more than one gentleman or lady who appreciate facial hair. And basically we get together to share a camaraderie, a bond, um, nothing else more than, than the hair that grows on our face. Beard clubs for me started in approximately 2005 doing um, research on the internet and realizing that a beard was much more than just growth from the face. A beard encompassed a large demographic here within the United States as well as in other countries around the world. With that power I said, man, I have to really connect with some of these people. I have to find these people so <clears throat> I could personally feel uh, like I'm part of a family. We were simply trying to do what beards have always been trying to do. It's unite, it's come together, it's celebrate. And there just happened to be a magical bond between three young men who met each other through an internet screen. I'm Rob Carducci and Sir Roger Walters. Can you explain that real quick? I can, I can. Rob Carducci, this guy, eyes, face. Sir Roger Walters, the beard, the knower of all and the doer of all doers. Runs my life. He's a bastard. I love him. I'm, I just meant I love him. Started calling my beard Sir Roger Walters when he told me at about the age of 21, 22, that it was time to be two separate people. It wasn't my decision. Just he, he clued me in. He clued me in. He was better than I am, and I totally agreed. And he needed his own, his own life. So uh, I didn't create it. He let me know what it was. I hate to say it myself, but I'm an individual. Like where I live, I don't really make sense with a lot of the things that go on. A lot of the people like do my own thing. <clears throat> and with facial hair, beards, whatever, it's honestly what I'm best at. <laughs> just going to meet up with these people, it's just a lot of fun. So finding like these guys, people, girls, whatever, like everybody that has the same like feelings into like, you know, beard's a cool thing. No, it's man tooth, it's just it. You know, it's all part of it. If I shave this off, it would still be me, you know. It's just that now that I meet new people, they think Mantooth is the beard, you know what I mean? But before the beard, it was still Mantooth, so. They're all, there's a certain story behind every beard, so there's always something to talk about when you meet a guy with a beard, and usually they're 
types of people that you would usually enjoy hanging out with anyway, because they just, they're all about having fun and not caring what other people think, whether they like it or not. You know? I had beers since I was uh, 15. That's how I got into the bars. Wow. Go, amazing. You go to the main tavern, talk to the kids, talk to the bars, and they'll let you know. I can shave it and come right back. Really? You, you made me look like a horse's ass. I would, answer was so much better than mine. High five. I would never make you look like an ass. No, you didn't mean to. I'll no, be honest did. with you. My microphone is weighing my beard down, so I'm going to clip off. The New York City Beard and Mustache Championships was originated in 2006 under the guise of John Friedman and John Bulette. These two extraordinary gentlemen provided a gateway for the world to zoom in on the Big Apple and the beards that it had to showcase. It was contagious from the, the moment I walked in the doors of the 2006 championships. I knew I had to be a part of that championships. Um, and I was gonna do what, what, whatever I could in my power to recreate something that gave me the same feeling I had received in 06. The thing is, unless you have your own money invested, you don't have the same passion and yeah. you don't have the same fears. Your balls aren't on the line. Exactly. You know? And and when they are on the line, it really makes you work, I think, that much harder and in a way that much smarter for, for your goal. And I think that's one of the reasons that 2006 NYC BMC uh, didn't reoccur uh, annually or biannually is because um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. What do you get out of it? Just the pride of saying, hey, I had a beer fest and it was fun. To me, that's basically all it's about, but there's so many other avenues, too. You're a high school teacher, and how right. has um, right. the whole beard thing affected it, especially recently with the NYC BMC? It's a good question. It's, uh, I, I guess I'll handle that in two parts. The first part is, um, it's been awesome. Everybody at school is really supportive of my beard and beards in general, because last year, I started like a mini beard campaign with the with the faculty, and we had about I don't know eight male teachers grow beards for the purpose of raising money for uh, bone cancer research. Oh God! <laughs> it's funny that you even call me that because oftentimes <laughs> I don't really go by my 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 name. It's weird. Um, of course, at school, I'm Mr. You know, Sagamon, so that's kind of cool. But the whole Matt thing is, I could never be known as like Matt with a beard. I developed the name Beards at a party one time when I was, you know, back in college. And it just stuck, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to have a beard, then I'm being called Beards. There can be, you know, you have to have a nickname behind this stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, how do you feel walking around as Steve, like, all the time? It's, it's medium. Yeah, it's medium, yeah. but, you know, now that you have a beard, you know, personality starting to come out. You might want to think about something. Certainly. Um, a getup is, is what you make of it. I personally feel most comfortable representing beards with a fedora, glasses, a blazer, and uh, maybe, maybe a funny shirt. Um, you need to do what's right for you. If you feel comfortable in jeans and a t-shirt and you wear it well, I, I totally suggest you rock it. Um, but you need to bring out your beard, your personality in any, any way you can. Um, for me, this is, this is my getup. This is, this is how I like to do. For other people, it might be totally different. It might be a Civil War reenactment. It might be a biblical reenactment. They need to do what's comfortable for them. I need my glasses. Can you help uh, me? Where did those 3D sunglasses Anybody have a cowboy hat? Oh, uh, Toby was chewing on them this morning. I'm out of character yeah. tonight. This is, <laughs> sunglasses. Those are yeah, medium. Sunglasses I need darker and bigger. I need those, like, <laughs> girl yeah, ones. How about these 3D yeah. glasses? How do you feel about those? Ooh, those look pretty sweet, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I like those. I mean, if somebody comes at you, it might be scary. Cause these are the 3Ds? Like they're really coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. So these are going to leave me, like, acid trip and, yeah. like... Everything's in 3D now, right? Word. It's crazy. <laughs> You live in a 2D like world, and now you're really touching days. my beard. It might be. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Rob Carducci Show. Rob Carducci Show. Hi, I'm Rob Carducci, and this is Rob Carducci Beard and Mustache Sensation, a television program in which we 
highlight the wonderment that is facial hair. This is my co-host Harvey, and tonight's guest will be Sir Roger Walters. So Sir Roger Walters, what makes your beard unique? Well, if by your you mean me, well then it's obvious. I mean, I'm, I'm Sir Roger Walters. Uh, I'm knighted. I have worldwide rec recognition. I'm a sex symbol for the ages, and in most cases, a man grows a beard, but I, I grew a man. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I'd like to thank my co-host, Harvey, and our special guest, my beard, Sir Roger Walters. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I am doing all the work here, bringing in all the ratings. <laughs> I hope you have a great night, and remember, keep that beard growing. Grow to grow. Like, I don't know, like, slowly... In the last couple of months, just this whole competition thing and people like growing it too seriously, it's kind of like giving me a sour taste for why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it for fun, the camaraderie, the, the brotherhood, the good times. And some people are taking it a little too like it's an NFL game or baseball game. Like, I don't know. It's just that serious. There's just no point anymore to me. Like, it's just too much competition, which I've never been big into competition. So why not just do it for fun? Same with sports. <laughs> I think it's good that they grow up for the competition in a friendly atmosphere. I don't want them to go the comp uh, grow up for a competition to try to win, get mad when they go there and don't win, you know, or don't place and start bitching, you know. I'd rather them just come out, have a beard and a conversation, have fun, you know. Don't just get mad and shave when you don't win or, you know, if it's not growing like you want it to, just be in it for fun. Don't just be in it because you want to have a big, sick beard. Kind of do publicity pretty much just get out there and just get hammered and you know spread the word that's about it I don't do much as I can't design a website and I can't really you know put things together that are successful I kind of just show up when it's done and uh, try to have fun that's kind of what I'm known for is you know being out till you know the sun comes up and then still trying to drink but everywhere's closed that's what happened in Oil City. I don't remember much of that. I remember I had took my pants off and I was dancing around because I was by myself. You know, there was a bunch of other couples there. So I started dancing around doing crazy dances. And the, I guess the bar owner or manager came over and was upset and was like, oh, put your pants back on. I was like, all right, all right, put my pants back on. Sat at the bar, the place died. Everybody's sitting around, like, yeah, this place is stupid. And the guy came back, he's like, you know what? Take your pants off, have a good time. Took my pants back off and I'm running back around. Everybody's jumping around again, everybody's having fun, so. I guess my underwear are definitely entertaining in Oil City. It's, it's one week out from NYCBMC, and I was mentioning earlier that I'm starting to go kind of crazy, <laughs> and I'm a little stressed out. And the ride down here was, if, if nothing else, um, it's scary because I had a lot of time to think by myself about a million things that could be going, that could go wrong, essentially, at the event. Some of which I'll get into later, maybe. After I drink a couple of beverages. <laughs> it's what? What is it? Stress. It's stress just, from everything. Yeah, just stacking on, like stress stacking on top of stress. Everybody that's basically <laughs> signed up to be on this has asked me if they have to pay. Which is ten times worse than what you've already asked me. <laughs> At least you're like sort of working. Yeah. Like people that are just like... Do you guys want to kill me? Yeah, do I have to pay? And it's like, do you know how much I paid for you? <laughs> Grand, you know, like at least like I'm close to 10 G's in, in bearded entertainment. <laughs> that who the hell knows if I'll make back, which I doubt I will, but if I do, God bless it. Have you know, I, I want people to walk out of there and say that was fun and unusual and that was much better than I thought it would be. So I want them to feel that they got their $15 worth and. If they weren't bearded before or if they, I guess, never gave facial hair a second thought, I would like them to consider the camaraderie and joy that it brings to so many people. So that's, again, the, the philosophy behind it. But there's, there's a lot of things running through my head right now that I hope I can uh, put aside for Virginia. You know, we got to focus on Virginia. I'm not going to charge you yet. I'll charge you later. I'll charge you later when I need beer. How are you today? I'm off to a beard competition. Do you know where that is? It's, it's in Virginia. How do I get there? Alexandria. No, no, Alexandria from here. All right, you think I'm going to win? All right, bye-bye.
That didn't sound very promising. Hopefully. She doesn't even know where Alexandria is and we're less than a half hour out. This is not a good sign. Hey, we're heading down to the food court apparently um, in search of Virginia Beard and Mustache Championships. What's great about this is we have no address written down. So we're, as we go, we're just asking Virginians if they've heard of the Beard and Mustache Championships. To go back to the beginning, the purpose was to get together and drink beer and eat some bratwurst. And that's, they haven't strayed very far. That's where the food court is. Uh, beard competition. Uh, the process begins with advanced partying before, during, and after the contest. Have you heard of the Beard and Mustache Championships taking place tonight at no. some courtyard? I haven't. Where I drove all the way down from Connecticut to be a part of this. By the way, beautiful city. It beautiful. Is. It's amazing. It is. I am very jealous. If I was on the streets of Hartford at this hour, I would have been mugged twice and maybe had my beard shaven. It needed to look the same. Everything needed to be great, with the exception of freestyle. Here, we, we found this by Beard Radar. Um, Steve, I'll have to give credit where credit's due, said, uh, I, I, I smell the beards, and also garlic. Yes. But, oh, nice shades. Oh, thank you. You know, there's nothing quite like sunglasses at night. Um, I forget who said that best. Maybe, uh, who, it? who wrote that to you? Stardust? No. Was that, uh, Ulysses Grant? Uh, sunglasses at night? Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, great. Perfect directions. Beard in general. Personally? Yeah. I think they're wonderful. I love them. But you've heard that eyes are the no to the soul, but I believe beards are your skylight to your spirit. It's a lot of fun. And I'm really happy to be in Dennis's house tonight. I'm glad you came. Oh. I wouldn't have missed it. I'm looking, looking forward to a riot this evening next Saturday. Hell yeah, that's right, that's right. It's going to be a good time. Beardism is a term that I researched and found to be alive and well, unfortunately, in, in America and, and the surrounding world itself. Um, beardism is when the outsider, the general public, views you before they know you based upon follicles. Um, of course, the more, maybe the scarier, as they say. Um, I've personally had many accounts of beardism, people asking why would you do that, why would you grow that. Um, they love to label you, either a religious uh, affiliation, um, possible hippie, drug aficionado, um, all those types of things seem to come into beardism. Yeah, my friends are scared of him. <laughs> What do they say about him? Why is it so scary? It's they don't go near him. Yeah. It's funny, I was going to walk through the house we just bought and uh, to make sure everything was cool before settlement. I just had to look out the back door and the kids behind my house, they're jumping on the trampoline in the yard and they said, oh my God, he's got a beard. And they ran in the house. <laughs> I was like, wow, all right. I didn't worry about them coming in the yard. And in the summertime when they want to come ask if she can play, they'll stand down by the road and throw bouncy balls at the door and get yeah. the answers. One day a girl got brave and came up on roller skates and knocked on the door. By the time I got it, she was at the sidewalk, spun around, <laughs> and asked if she was there. You grow it because of laziness. That is the most aggravating one that I've ever heard and ridiculous because it takes a lot of work to have a beard. And people think you're just doing it for lazy and you just let it do its own thing. No, no, it takes over your life. I didn't say that. Shh, shut up. You don't even know. That's, that's what I, sorry. Give me a second. I gotta move my mustache and take a drink of water. Yeah, that's mm. kind of key. It's funny that uh, I noticed looking at SRW's facial hair, it's like with the long mustache, I have the same problem. If you take a drink of pretty much anything, it's always either there or on your shirt yep. instantly. <laughs> so you do a lot of like moving and like this type of thing. Yeah. Just kinda, <laughs> it's kind of. You, you learn a lot about how to drink and eat. <laughs> yeah, Food is, is my is, enemy. It's, it's difficult. Chicken wings? No. Barbecue wings? I have to like cut with a, a fork and knife in very tiny cuts mm -hmm. and then like nicely place them in my mouth. 
or if I'm drunk, then I just slam it into my face and I have just barbecue sauce, like holding my beard up to like all the way on my cheek. I'm like, hey. I condition it and I wash it and I take care of it. So it's not like it's gonna be dirty. I mean, there are dirty beards, I guess, but not this one. Oh, well, she keeps that in check. Every time I get in the shower, there's something new, some hot oil or Aussie <laughs> fruit teas. Yeah, for being a hairy guy, I'm pretty up on my hygiene. If people say, oh yeah, bearded people, they're lazy. I spend more time getting this thing ready than I ever did when I shaved, you know, <laughs> between conditioning it and brushing it and keeping it out of the way and just shaving so much easier. I think lazy people shave. <laughs> um, how often would you say the girls do like the beard? Never, never, not in this area. Yeah. Like other states, Vermont, I'm a king. Northern Jersey, better. Central Jersey, I'm like Sasquatch. When I met him, um, in Naugatuck, he had a clean-shaven face, and I thought he was so cute. <laughs> and uh, well, no, 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 <laughs> let me finish. And um, then he, you know, he always had some sort of facial hair going. So he either he's doing like you know a little tiny beard or big chops or mustache or Fu Manchu or mm. just a short beard. So he's always doing something different. So. And, and I like that. I don't like this gigantic beard. That's the only thing. It's not that gigantic. I know. I mean, I do like the color. and You were aware of that at NYC BMC. You said, ah, oh, thank God. I His know. beard will only grow so long. Well, he already says he doesn't think he can shave now. Because he's beards. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. If I do shave, it's going to be just a strange thing. I think I'll feel let down. Yeah. A sense of disappointment. But. I don't know. I'm yeah. definitely going to shave again. I know that. I just It's like, it's funny. After NYC, I thought I would trim my mustache because it, it's definitely a problem with sandwiches and certain beverages like Guinness. And kissing. And definitely kissing <laughs> is an issue. And I still can't bring myself to even trim it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange thing. Excuse me? I would love to. Throughout this challenge, there's been quite a few highs and lows, as any event planner knows what I'm speaking of. And by highs and lows, I mean there's been sponsorships of companies that have promised uh, great amounts of, of support, and with the tough economic times, have nagged on their official uh, or unofficial promise of that support. I, I can't even imagine doing that. Like I, I stressed out when I tried to put together the bearded pub night, just like to make sure that people were gonna show up that said that they were gonna show up. I didn't have to sell anything. I had to make sure the bar was gonna do all right, but I didn't have to do everything that beards did. Like just the amount of money that it takes to put this together and the organization, getting people to help you to do things. I don't think I could do it. I don't take stress that well. I like everything very simple in my life. And that guy took on a big, big responsibility and he did kick ass with it. We're now essentially seven days from the actual event. Um, my emotions seem to be up and down and I just try to take it one day at a time. And I always try to remember it's in the spirit of beards and goodwill. Can you tell us how much I'm going to be Sure. New York City Beard and Mustache Championship, which is uh, financed from my personal savings account. Do you agree that you don't grow the beard, the beard grows you? Absolutely. I always say, if God didn't want us to have beards, they wouldn't grow on our faces. It's actually, it's actually in the Bible, not to shave. It Le is. Leviticus 19.27. Thou shalt not round the side growth of your head, nor mar the edges of your beard. So, you yeah. know. My name is Phil Olson. I'm from uh, Lake Tahoe, California, and I'm the founder and self-appointed captain of Beard Team USA. Do you have a name for your beard? <laughs> Fucking awesome, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's my lady tickler. Tonight is just going to be fun. Um, if, if, if there's one word to say, we're going to have a blast. We're going to have a good time. I think overall, once people get in, once people start mingling, it's just a celebration of excellence of beards and mustaches and, and facial hair. I think we're going to have a blast. Are you glad to see the turnout? I, I'm very scared. <laughs> I'm very, very frightened. 
Um, I hope it's a peaceful bearded crowd. <laughs> there's only going to be a certain number al allowed in. I think at this point in the line, they're safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> How the fuck are you doing? All right. I'm, <laughs> I'm Beards, and out of the kindness of my heart, I wanted to have one of these kind of events for you people. Okay? I, I, I hope you have a blast tonight. Make this your night, okay? And uh, welcome to the New York City Beard Mustache Championship. I'm Jack Passion, and I'm the world champion of beards. Individuality of everybody is so different all the time. I don't know what exactly what it is that a bearded person to a bearded person, that friendship is just there automatically. I'm happy that it's there. I, I think it's just like the brotherhood of it all. But I don't know, because people are so different all the time. Dude, the line is around the corner. It's brilliant. It's awesome. I never, I never get to meet anybody else with mustaches. And you talk about weird shit like products, like what do you use and stuff like that. I'm like, what? Like, it sounds kind of gay and shit, but it's cool, you know. And I think beards are glamorous and feminine and elegant. I almost don't believe it. I'm kind of in disbelief. I'm in shock. And I'm just, I guess, I just can't believe that it's, it's happening. I just can't believe it's happening. I waited five months for this. Um, I tried to bail out of this about five or six times. This morning I was telling my wife I had tingles in my fingers, similar to butterflies in your stomach, and tingles in my feet. So I was really, really scared, um, and I'm running on empty, but I feel like I'm running on, on full. What we're up against is there's so many facial hair stereotypes, okay? You can have a beard and not be a mountain man, a biker, or a hippie, you know? I'm maybe a little bit of those things too, but I'd like to show that you can be yourself. You don't have to be one of these things that grows beards. Show us if it's real. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Right? Is that real? I guess, I don't know. This, I, I hope that satisfied you. What was your favorite part about the NYC event? What was like the coolest thing? Maybe like an event or like a person you met or like, you know, just a... Honestly, the people that came out. Like a lot of friends, family that came out to support that like for a while they, they didn't get it. They didn't know why I was doing this, why I was going to all these events and they came out and supported and were like more than proud. A lot of them came up to me after I got off the stage and even though I didn't win, they came up and hugged me and just went, I love where your life has gone. Which to me, like that was, that was worth it. Like just seeing people that went, I don't, why are you doing this? This is weird. Came out, had the most fun that they've had in a long time. Looked at six, 700 people that came out feeling the same way and just went, this is great. It's like you're doing exactly what you want to be doing. You're living your life. You're having fun. That, to me, was the coolest. For success doesn't even begin to describe. It was phenomenal. It was epic, for sure. It'll live on forever. Even if you have another one next year, you'll always remember the first one and how crazy it was. Because next year, you kind of have a expectations. This was no expectation, you know? It could be just us sitting in a room, you know? Or as, as it was, it was just crazy. Can I ask you a question? Your your mustache is very shiny. Do you put a styling product in it to keep it so shiny? I do uh, hairspray. <laughs> it's very nice. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I, I'm from New Jersey. I like hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you are, ladies and gentlemen, the winner. So that really um the day that I already gave my wife and I a, a great sense of accomplishment. It seemed like this was kind of the the last. I don't know. Oh award, if you will, that was presented and presented to the country. So everybody, uh, everybody got a feel for, for what beard competition is all about. Do you have anything uh, that you want to say on behalf of, you know, yourself, Sir Roger, beards everywhere, anything particular? Just keep it growing. Be yourself. Don't stop because people are saying it's weird or anything, which I don't think anybody out there that has a beard at this point thinks it's weird or would stop. But I, I would just say keep it growing. I, I do every day, but grow for yourself and not for anyone else. I don't have anything real scholarly to say. Just be strong. Be strong. Just poetic. Yeah.
Sometimes it happens with me. 